It is a big day for you yes. today. The first day of your new series, yes. and it's an important one, a very, very important one. Hannah has teamed up with law enforcement agencies across the Cape Fear to help them and you. But there is something that, she, excuse me, and our communities, but she also needs your help. Each week, I'm going to tell a story, a story that doesn't have an ending, and that's where you come in. I need your help to find the ending to these stories. They are mysteries to the detectives and to the families involved, stories that are all unsolved. The first, a disappearance. Detectives say it's as if David Cottle walked out of his house one day and just vanished, leaving everything behind and his family puzzled. David Cottle Jr. Just a yeah, good old boy, local boy. <laughs> A father. He has two daughters. A drummer. Very musically talented. A brother to Christy Bradley. He was my big brother. A man who had a lot of things going for him. Just real involved with his family, the church, um, loved the water. But sometime around 2012, Bradley says things took a turn for the worse. It all began with pain pills. Um, he had gotten injured and went to the doctor and was put on pills for the pain. She says Cottle lost his job, his house, and his marriage and moved in with his aunt on Cotswold Court in Murrayville. He lost everything and he would do anything to get pain pills. In March 2013, Bradley remembers having a conversation with Cottle. He was very distraught. He couldn't hardly talk to me without crying. He was just... He seemed like he was broken. That would be the last conversation they would ever have. The last time that David was seen was actually March 9th of 2013. Detective Justin Varela with the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office says Cottle's aunt reported him missing after he never came home. She was leaving the house to go out and David was actually at the house. And then when she returned home at about six o'clock that night, David was gone leaving almost everything behind, all but two things. So he kept a journal, and the journal was missing along with a, like a lime green backpack. Varela says Cottle didn't have a cell phone, he didn't make a single bank transaction, and they have no evidence to suggest foul play. I don't think anybody hurt David. I really don't think that. I just don't feel like he would go somewhere and not have any contact with his family. Varela says even if Cottle voluntarily left, something doesn't add up. It's very odd that he wouldn't have contacted anyone or he didn't leave a note uh, saying that he was leaving. Varela says in the beginning, detectives got a couple of tips from the public. Someone called in and reported that they saw David actually walking I believe in the area of the railroad tracks in Wallace, North Carolina. Deputies searched the area. But no one ever found him, and it was never confirmed that it was actually David Cottle that was seen. Then another tip in Pender County. There was an address that we were given in Pender County, and we actually went and checked that address as well. The individuals there didn't seem like they knew who he was or had not seen him. Tips that eventually ran out. It just doesn't make any sense how someone can just walk off and never be seen or heard from again. Is there any possibility still in your mind that he could be alive somewhere? Yeah, sometimes I think that he could be. I mean, he, he joked about going to Miami or Tennessee and getting in the music scene and playing his drums and just living off grid. We don't know if David is alive at this point. I feel like someone somewhere knows something. Something that could lead them to an answer, to closure. Something that is better than nothing. I feel like maybe someone did help and maybe they're afraid to come forward. I just, I don't think that they would be in any trouble. We just wish we knew something. And where did you see him? You know, did you drop him off somewhere? Anything better than what we have now. The something that keeps David Cottle's disappearance unsolved. So this is where you come in. If you know anything, even the smallest thing, please contact the New Hanover County Sheriff's Office. After Good Morning Carolina, you can find this story and contact information for detectives on our website, wwaytv3.com. His family must be just devastated. Yeah, she says they, each family member is kind of different. They're all in feel differently about it, um, so it's it's been tough for four years. It's, um, f four years with not hearing anything from him. Not a word, do no they, note, no, I mean, no trace. Do like, they, it, did anybody mention since he took his journal, were they, did, did, was that a clue That was never way? found, it was never really? found. The backpack and the journal 
never found. Wow, so. amazing. So if you know anything about this at home, let us know. Yeah. It's still an open case. But before you try to help us solve this case, stick around for a little bit longer. <laughs>